Sunday, October the 9th. Today, I led my annual mushroom foray down in the new forest. Not new, by the way. It was set aside as a hunting wood for William the Conqueror in 1066. My role was to act as guide and walking encyclopedia. If you hear that, you have to return to the coach. So I shall do that wherever I am in the woods, you know, at, at half past 11 or something, to return back. But the, the first thing I want to say is um, we make every effort to look after the woods and look after the area of the new forest. It's an immensely important ecological area. And in collecting mushrooms, you're, you're picking, in a sense, the fruit of the plant. So to actually take the mushroom doesn't damage it. It's like picking an apple off a tree. And in general, if there's a group of mushrooms, don't collect them all, just take a, a, a few or a sample if you think it's something going to be interesting. And so on. It's a fairy tale mushroom because in the north where they, they ate it particularly, the in Lapland, for instance, the value of a decent one of these was reputed to be one reindeer. And your sort of minor lap, your herdsman lap, would sell it to the property owning lap, the one who owned the herds. And the going price of one of these was one reindeer. He would then get his mates round on Saturday night, presumably, they would ingest this and get high as kites. <laughs> <laughs> then, they, it seemed in Lapland, they had some sort of wooden box that you peed into. And the, these, the minor laps would then go and drink the pee and they would get just as high as their masters. Amanita muscaria is horribly toxic. I drummed into the heads of the hunters that unless they can positively identify any wild mushroom species, they shouldn't eat any at all. Even the common field mushrooms have poisonous lookalikes. Oh, well, you see, this, uh, he's been, been fourth. I see. <laughs> so this, this is uh, a hedgehog, a proper hedgehog fungus. And it's called hedgehog because it's got these little spines growing down. And I know we're going to get a few of these for lunch. It's called in French, pied de mouton. When we got back to the Chewton Glen Hotel, I went down to the kitchens to get a sneak preview of what Pierre Chevillard was cooking up for lunch. Ah, Pierre, <laughs> this is the place to get. What are you up to? Hello, we are, I'm cooking some mushroom. Hello, in here I got some uh, trompette de la mort, some shiitake mushroom, some mousson, some pleurote, pied de mouton, and girol. So this, this is to prepare the, the monkfish. Garnish donc with these different sort of mushroom, mm. which once they are cooked, we can put back together and flavor them with parsley, shallots, and garlic. So you keep them all separate because you want the flavors to stay. The flavor and also the color. And the colors. And the color, yeah. That sounds great. And here we go. See? Great. I'm waiting for it. I'm going to have a glass of wine and then I'm, right. I hope to eat. Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, it is. It doesn't seem to have the same. Um, over drinks on the terrace, everybody displayed their finds and asked me endless questions. With 40 pairs of eyes, it's amazing what volume and variety of mushrooms can be found.